good to have a missionary today, Sister Norris, missionary to Brazil. Amen. And we're glad to have her. Sister Norris, we want you to come. And whatever you have tonight, that's what we want. Amen. Let's just say thank the Lord for Sister Norris. Amen. And that work that she is doing. Praise God. Praise the Lord, church. Are you happy tonight? Are you happy tonight? Yes. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so happy to be here. The Lord has been so good to us. You may be seated. I'm, I want to thank Brother and Sister Martin and you, church, for having me tonight. I am a missionary to the country of Brazil. I was born in Brazil. I'm a native, and I'm a fruit of a missionary work. I have a, a video, a presentation, but I'm going to tell you that I don't know what would happen to me if the missionary didn't go to Brazil. Two missionary families went to Brazil, the bakers and the nurses, and I usually say that they went to Brazil just for me. <laughs> I, I grew up in a Catholic family, very, very devout Catholic family, and so many things have changed in my life since the missionary missionaries went there to Brazil. And I mean it. Uh, everything that I knew was from the Catholic Church. And for me, it's such a privilege to be here with you today to share my burden to the country of Brazil and to tell you everything that the Lord has done. So many miracles, and I'm going to be hearing a few things tonight that you're going to be happy just to know what the Lord has been doing in the, at the country of Brazil. And I know that this church has a heart for missions, and you love missionaries, and you support the, the work in, all over the world. And may God bless you tonight while you watch this, this video. Just five minutes, and you're going to have an idea, more or less, uh, where I came from and what am I doing in Brazil. God bless you. How much do you think that you're so worth? It's worth more than the whole world, more than any other possessions. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Robert Morris family was sent to Brazil to the city of Rio de Janeiro as missionaries to preach the gospel to the lost. Thousands of people were saved. I am one of them. I'm so thankful that the Lord saved my grandmother. She was baptized in Jesus' name. She received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She was a big influence in my life. She sent me to the Bible school where the missionary Robert Norris was a director. I'm a fruit of a missionary work. I received my calling to the mission field at the Bible school. And guess what? I married brother Robert Norris's youngest son, Jeffrey Norris, and we became a missionary family. We were appointed as missionaries to the country of Brazil in 1987. We were involved in many areas, preaching, teaching, pastoring. We decided to buy this property for our Bible school. This place used to be a soap factory and the owners were involved in black magic. Our students came from all over Brazil to study the word of God for a year. We use our main tabernacle for our graduations and for national and district conferences. Six years ago, my husband passed away. He went to live with the Lord. I am still pastoring this church in Costa Barros. It is located in one of the most dangerous slums in Rio. But the Lord has been so good to us has given us favor, 
has protected us. There have been days that we had to lay down on the floor during a service because of the shooting outside. In spite of all that, souls have been saved, baptized in Jesus' name, received the Holy Ghost. They have been taken care of. We provide food supplies for the poor families and the church has been a shelter for our community. In the area where the Bible school is located, we have to deal with riots, drug trafficking, killing, but I have good news. Our Bible school students are involved in outreach. The Bible school has made a difference. Family have been saved, have been baptized, have repented of their sins. They respect the church and they don't do any harm to us. This young man's name is Thiago. He was already involved in drug trafficking when he accepted Jesus as his personal savior. And as you see, we are baptizing him in Jesus' name, and he is receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He is serving the Lord now with his whole heart. today if a missionary wasn't sent to the country of Brazil. I wasn't only saved, but I became a missionary and I'm preaching the gospel to my own people. How much does a soul worth for you? I challenge you today to invest in the kingdom of God, becoming an intercessor, a partner, and a giver to the country of Brazil. We need you. Each saved soul in Brazil will have your touch. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? The glory. <laughs> I mentioned my grandmother. She was the first lady to receive the Holy Ghost in the country of Brazil in the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, the Baker family went to Brazil before the family, the North family, and she was baptized, but in Jesus' name, she received the Holy Ghost. And I grew up, as I said, in Catholic church in the way I learned, I had to talk to Mary first, and then we talked to Jesus. Jesus would talk to God, and God would talk to the Holy Spirit, right? Just to do whatever you need to do. And when I, the priest, I went to the church, Catholic church, and I was there just watching the service. It was too small, but I wanted so bad just to read the Bible, and we are not allowed to. So my grandmother said, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I did, I really want to know what was going on because my grandmother, she just changed her life completely. She became a different person. And I thought, you know, she had something so good that I would like to have it because I was very close to her. And she said, why don't you go to the Bible school? in Rio de Janeiro and go to, uh, to meet this missionary and your life would be completely changed. And I said, well, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be baptized. I don't receive this. What you're talking about, this Holy, Holy Ghost, I don't want to do that. And she said, okay, we can talk to him. Maybe he will accept you at the church, at the Bible school, and we are going to see what's going to happen. So when I went there, I talked to my father-in-law, and he said, well, this is not, we are not used, we don't, we don't do that at all, but I'm going to make an exception, and you can study all year, and at the end, if the Lord speak to you and talk to, in your heart, you can, if you change your mind, you can be baptized and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and your life will be completely changed. So the same thing was repeated by the missionary. And he said, okay, I'm going to do this. I said, I don't want to be baptized. I want to learn what you're talking about. And I'm going to make my decision. Okay. 
So he went back home, and when he it was, he was preaching, uh, praying. The Lord spoke to him. He spoke to him about me. And he said that he should tell me that I needed to receive his name. And he said, Lord, I already told her that she wasn't going to be baptized. And I had given my word, so I'm not going to change it. So, yes, you will. You have to talk to her. So, <laughs> so when he was in the morning, he came talk to me. I need to talk to you. He was, you know... He did not say how he was going to say. And I said, did you change your mind, Pastor? You're sending me back home. And he said, no, the Lord spoke to me about you. And I said, how come? How come? And he, did he tell my name? Did he talk about me? I had never heard this before. So he said, yes, the Lord has a wonderful plan, a big plan in your life. He talked about you. So I was baptized in Jesus' name, and my, my sins were washed away. And while I was still being baptized, my tongue, you know, was something was wrong with it. And I told him, I said, listen, I, I, take me out of this water. I'm having a stroke. Just get me out of here. And he said, this is the Holy Ghost. I said, see, that's why I didn't want to receive it. I'm, gonna have, I'm, I'm having a stroke. He said, this is not a stroke. This is the Holy Ghost. So a month later, on my birthday, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost completely. I had to know I was so afraid. But the Lord just filled me up with the Holy Ghost. And... Uh, my father-in-law invited me to teach at the Bible school. I became one of the teachers. I was uh, two years older than my husband, so I was his teacher. So he was teaching, and I taught him at the Bible school. And things were ju ju just doing perfect, you know. We, we had a wonderful church, and uh, we didn't have uh, any problem with music, and we had good music. And I became the, uh, in charge of the Bible the, uh, Sunday school, the classes, and I was the director, and everything was going so smoothly. But I, something was missing. I said, the Lord has, has said that he had a big plan, huge plan in my life. Do you know how you feel so comfortable? You know, it's just so comfortable. Everything is so, you feel so happy. And, but down inside your bottom of your heart, you feel that something is going to happen. A change is coming. I don't want to live the way I'm living. I'm too happy. I want something to happen. I want a, different, a difference in my life. So my husband was called to this little church that you saw there. No music. Nobody, because everybody was afraid to go there. It was a very, very a neighborhood was just horrible, shooting, killing. And when I got there, I said, this is impossible. <laughs> I cannot believe that this is the big plan that the Lord had in my life. This is not the plan. So I started praying. I said, Lord, just change my husband's heart. Just change him, Jesus. Change him. He needs to be changed. And the more I prayed, the more he loved the place. And my daughter, uh, she was almost kidnapped because, you know, they want to kidnap her. And I have Sister Connie Davis. Can you stand up, please? My, uh, her, her nephew married my, my daughter. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it that the Lord would send me to that place and they want to kidnap my daughter and, and all the killings that was going on. And the Lord spoke to me again. I had a plan in your life. I have a plan in your life. And when we came to that place, we saw all the kids, you know, coming and running, wanting to, you know, to be with us. And the only car that they had in that neighborhood. And my husband was, uh, he, he passed away six years ago with uh, a congenital disease. But he was good back then. He could walk. He could preach. And uh, we were just, you know, I couldn't believe that I was in that place. But I just started being, getting in love with people, with the people there. Wanting to work there. Wanting to be with them. 
And uh, one day I was going to, to church and uh, the Lord spoke to me again. I have a plan in your life. And the, the time went by, went by. I, day after day, my, got my husband, he started getting worse. He couldn't walk anymore. He was in a wheelchair. And I had to take his place in the church. Could you imagine? I didn't even want to go there. And, and then I fell in love with the people. And I was happy to be there. And my husband couldn't go. And we had this big celebration for the church. It was a, a, an anniversary, and all the kids, you know, had the preparation the whole week. And uh, I was going to church, and the, the way I had, I saw two men, and they stopped the car, and they said, "I want to take the car, and I'm gonna kill you." My husband was at the at the house. But the, the week before, let me tell you, before I continue, I, I was in doubt. People start talking to me. You should be in that church. Your husband is in a wheelchair. Are you sure they're going to be there? Are you sure that this is the Lord's uh, plan for your life? So I start doubting. I said, well, maybe I was right. Maybe this wasn't the way I should be. I should go. And the Lord spoke to me again. Do you know how many there are here the Lord has spoken to you in your heart so strongly? And he said, I'm going to give you a sign that I'm, I am with you. Okay. So I forgot about it. And the guy just point, got the gun. He had a, a, a machine gun in my head. I'm going to kill you. And I said, you're not going to kill me. He said, oh, yes, I will. I will. And you're going to drive the car. And I just got the car. It was the chief for Christ car, brand new car. And I said, oh, no, you're going to ruin the car. <laughs> you don't know how to drive the car. So you're going to teach me. You're going to get in. You're going to teach me. I said, oh, well, you don't want me to get in. A woman driving the car for you, do you? You don't want to do it. I'm going to teach you. So he was so nervous. He wanted. So do you know? When the Lord tells you that he has a plan in your life, all of a sudden I just start thinking, maybe he's going to send an angel and the angel is going to come and grab me. Or the police will come and protect me. Or he's going to repent of the, his sins, all those sins. And he's going to be speaking in tongues. And something miraculous is going to happen. And all the angels from the heaven will come and rescue me. Do you think that happened? Mm -mm. Not at all. Nothing happened. And I had three girls with me, and they started screaming, screaming, screaming. And I said, just don't say anything. Just be quiet. And they thought that the, 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 the drug dealer had taken me. So, <laughs> so they started screaming, Pastor, come back, Pastor. And I was just in front of them because they just left with the car. And I said, I'm here. Hello, I'm here. Oh, you're safe. Thank you, Jesus. So we had to walk to the church, and I had lollipops for the kids, and I have all the gifts, and I have everything to have for, because I needed to have things for the crusade, kids' crusade. So as soon as I got in the church, everybody came running and crying and crying, hugged me and said, that's okay. They took the car, but that's okay. I'm here. I'm here. They said, no, you don't understand. The other gang, they just burned the driver alive. This is the message that they sent to the police. So you could be killed, and the Lord just spared you. But when I got there, the other gang was waiting. Where's your car, Pastor? And I said, they took it. Who took it? The other gang, they just took the car. So just get in this car right now. I said, what? Get in this car. So they put me in their car, and they start shooting all over the place, just shooting, shooting. Said, you don't, you never do that to our pastor. So all of a sudden, I became their pastor. You know? That? <laughs> so after that, everybody started uh, just respecting the church. They wanted to go to the church. They want us to pray for them because they said, really, the Lord is in this 
church. And nothing's going to happen to them. Can you say, thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. 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 Everybody can be a recipient of God's grace. I am a living testimony of God's grace and protection. We serve a God that sees us. The Lord knows your name your address, everything that you do. And you don't need to be in the same place that you have been for so long. You don't need to lead with drug dealers and situations like that. But your neighbor needs you. Your family needs you. The people that you just go out and you just, if you tell them the Lord loves you and the Lord has a special way to work in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a God that sees us. Hallelujah. He knows what you need. Hallelujah. 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 Proverbs 15 uh, verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are everywhere keeping watch on the wicked and the good. And I could be all night just telling you stories. How many here needs to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Let me see your hands. You don't have the Holy Ghost, so... Tonight will be going to be your day. Hallelujah. If you just believe it. And I'm, I have a way of saying and proving to you that the Lord is so good. Sometimes we think that we have to be so good. 100% good. Do everything that the Lord wants you to do. And say, oh, I don't deserve it. I thought about that too. When they told me that I, I needed to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This will never happen. I'm so mad sometimes. Well, you're just a little girl with 16 years old. How come you could be so mad? I was so mad. I didn't like the way some people would treat me or to treat somebody else. And one day I was in the church. My husband was there, wasn't there that night. And I was preparing, you know, just helping people how to understand the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of, of the Holy Ghost and the water baptism. So the same way I didn't understand. I just learned how to teach, right? You, you, about when you have your experience, you have to teach them. Do you agree with me? Okay, so you're just teaching and having this Bible study. And this lady came in the church. She had a knife. And she just you know, went to the church and said, I want my life completely changed today. And they told me if I would get here in the church, I would change my life. So she had a knife, and I thought, well, the first thing I need to do is just to take this knife, you know, of her hand. Because she was, she was a tiny little lady, but she had a strong voice. And with her, had a lot of people that came behind just to see what she was going to do. And she said, if nothing happens to me tonight, I'm going to kill you. So, well, <laughs> now I became her target, right? She was so mad. I don't know why. I said, what happened to you? And she said, I want to kill my sister-in-law. And I'm going to kill her. Okay. But the Lord needs to change me now. So, well. You can sit down, you can listen, because I'm preparing people to be baptized tomorrow, and you can learn. I don't want to learn anything. I want this change to be now. I want to be changed now. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want any explanation. I want to be changed now. I said, Jesus, you need to help me. At that moment, my husband was the pastor, right? So you just think, oh, I wish he was here. So something needed to happen. I said, so, well, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and God will change you completely. So I had all those people that came from the street just to see what was going, going on. I had people from my church just waiting to see what was going on. And she said, how can I receive this thing here? I said, well, you need to repent of your sins, and you just need to worship God. Just, it's very easy. It won't take long. Jesus is going to live with you forever, and you don't need to wait for this to happen. And I'm going to tell you, because there are some people in my church that didn't have the Holy Ghost, that didn't have received the Holy Ghost, and they're just watching what was going to happen. And are you ready? I asked her. I said, I'm ready. I want to receive it now. I said, okay, let's 
pray. And you know, I knew that the Lord was going to fill her with the Holy Ghost. I just knew it because she was so thirsty. She just wanted so bad to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I just grabbed the mic and just put it in her mouth and I said, okay, let's start praying and worshiping God. And she said, Lord, I said, you repeat with me. I said, just a second. Let me do my prayer. I said, okay, go ahead and do it. I said, Lord, I still want to kill her. I want to kill her so bad. I'm so mad at her, but I'm going to just wait. I said, okay, ask the Lord to forgive you. So I said, Lord, I'm ask her for forgiveness. And she was talking, and she was talking to the Lord. She was saying, I love you. And said, just tell him that you love him. But do you think he loves me? Oh, you're praying. Go ahead, continue. You know, she started continuing praying and praising God, and God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have seen so many miracles. And she was a killer. She was a lady, but she was a killer. She had killed people before. She was there. And she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you know what happened to our church? A revival. A revival. Because she just came in. And then two people from our church just came to me and said, how come she could receive the Holy Ghost? I've been seeking and asking for so many, so long, for such a long time. So go ahead and do it. Just praise the Lord. You're going to be receiving the Holy Ghost right now. And they did. So they received the Holy Ghost. It was just a feast. It was wonderful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God sees us. Doesn't matter where you live, which country you are in. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Forever. Hallelujah. 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 Can you say amen? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Nothing escapes his mighty vision. Hallelujah. He comes to strengthen us in our times of need. What do you need tonight? Is there anything difficult for God? Nothing. Nothing it is. And I just have begun to understand what the Lord had to do in our community, in that place. I don't know. Why he sent me to that little church before. I was so scared. I was so nervous. I was afraid of my daughter, my son. They're going to get killed. But you know, now, and I have been working uh, with my husband. I worked for, for, with him for 33 years in Brazil, in the same place, in traveling around the country. And six years by myself. And you can, can ask me, would you like to get out of that church? Do you know the answer? How many want to know the answer? No, no, no. I want to be there. I want to stay there. I want to be with my people. I want to stay. And you saw the little church. Everybody just jump in. And they just want to serve the Lord. So many people go to that church. So many people just want to receive what we have to share. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes our imperfect vision is clouded by our human nature. In our lack of spiritual understanding, my doctor told me, what are you doing in that community? All of them, they need to, to die. Do you know what? Uh, he doesn't know the Lord. And I said, you, need, you, you deserve to die. I deserve to die. The Lord just died on the cross for our sins. And we just keep judging one and another. But, you know, the Lord died for the drug dealers too, for those people too. And they need to repent. They need the Lord. It's, it's our responsibility just to preach the gospel and the Lord will do the, the rest. Everything they need to do, right? Do you agree with me? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each one of us, we have our own testimony. Your life is a testimony. My life is a testimony. I was, I'm here talking to you today, but I couldn't be here. I couldn't be. I, if the Lord wasn't my side and helped me, I wouldn't be here sharing 
all those testimonies. So, and I'm telling you, you're very important in the kingdom of God. Your testimony will help many other people. When, when people go to, uh, to visit us in Brazil, I'm inviting brother and sister Martin to go there. Don't be afraid. The Lord will be with you. <laughs> but I'm if I, when they go and testify and preach, you know, our, our people, it just like a sponge. They just want to listen and hear whatever you have to say because each one of us has a different testimony. And I'm going to finish tonight with one more testimony, something that really happened. My son, uh, he used to help other churches. In this church, we didn't, as I told you, we didn't have any musicians. Now we have people that can help us. And I asked him, let's go. Help me tonight because I don't have anybody. Your dad is not there. He used to play the guitar. So he is not there. So let's go with me. He said, Mom, you, do, you know that I don't like to go to that church. I, I prefer to stay here. He was always afraid because every time that he went with us it was a shooting and sometimes in the church we had to lay down you know just because of the shooting outside so he got so scared he was little you know he was scared and going to the church we saw those big boxes on the floor and i said oh my lord they just throw all the garbage and they should put the garbage in different places you know instead of throwing all over the place and he said mom it's not garbage these are pieces of body. And so what do you mean? And he said, Mom, look, there's, you know, arms and foot and, you know, but I couldn't see the head, but the pieces are the body. Or so somebody had killed someone some, and had chopped. Okay, as soon as I got in the church, everybody was just, you know, so nervous and said, Pastor, uh, the police just got out of here. So what happened? He said, somebody killed a man, the mayor. It was an important man, and uh, they were looking for the head. I said, did they find the head in the church? I said, no. I said, thank you, Jesus. The head wasn't here. So let's have church. The following week, I was there cleaning the church and painting because I like to paint and, and do things at the church, and I'm very, I like to do things like that. And this man got in. He had a gun, and he said, do you know? Do you want to know where the head is? I said, no. I don't want to know where the head is. And, in the, and as soon as he got in, he said, who is the pastor here? Everybody pointed at me. <laughs> she, she is the pastor. So I said, why did you come here? Just to tell me where the head is? I said, no, I came to you. I came to talk to you. And I said, to me, what happened? And he had a gun. He was there. And he said, the Lord spoke to me about you. First was the missionary, right? What I told you. Now is a killer, a drug dealer. And I was just, well, I probably am someone that's very important. Because now this man is coming here. He's going to kill me. <laughs> he had a gun. So what happened? And he said, I was going to shoot you, your car. I had a bazooka. And pastor, you're going, you were going to see the Lord in a jiff, just like that. And I think it would be better for you, but the Lord told me. He said, my servant, no. He talked to him. And he said, and I want to hear his voice again. I want to hear his voice again. One more time. And um, I asked him, how do you know it was the Lord? He said, I grew up in church, Pastor. I grew up in church. I was the pastor's right hand. And I did everything in the church. And I was there. And I'm not there. I, wasn't, I decided to leave the church because somebody in the church said something wrong about me. Something that wasn't true. And I got bitter. And I left the church, and I decided to kill everyone that I could. And though, no, this could happen to any one of us. No, you couldn't be, you maybe you wouldn't become a killer, but sometimes a lot of people just leave the church. 
with bitterness, with something that someone told about you. You're mad at the pastor, mad at someone that didn't talk to you. One time, one, one, well, a lady talked to me, said, I haven't seen you for a long time. What happened? Where did you go? Did you, did you travel? I said, no. The pastor's wife didn't talk to me, talked to everybody, so I decided to leave the church. I said, my Lord, the, the Lord just died for you on that cross. You're just leaving? Left the church because someone didn't talk to you? You must be crazy. Don't do that. Go come back to the Lord. So, and he said, Pastor, would you help me? Help me. I'm so sick. I'm talking about the drug dealer. I'm so sick of this life. I want the Lord to change my life completely. So, I told him, the Lord can talk to you. You can be changed. He said, do, do you want to know what is my profession? And I ju just look at him and the people that are just close to me, I just look at him and said, killer? And she, he said, I was just, you know, it was a way of talking to him. Just uh, breaking the ice probably. And I, was, and I was nervous too. And he said, you know, I open the bodies of people they are still alive. And I just grab the heart in my hand. And I just have the pleasure. I feel like I'm God. Just holding the heart, you know, heartbeat. So if a person is healthy, uh, the heart beats three minutes, uh, five minutes. If a person's not healthy, three minutes. And he said, you know, for me, it's so wonderful just to have their hearts in my hands but I'm so sick of this life I want to be have a change in my life and you can help me I just came here today because if the Lord spoke to me if spoke to me about you my life can be completely changed can you stand up this the, tonight with me why are you here tonight I think it's just a refreshing time right it's so wonderful to be in God's house to be refreshed I want my life to be completely changed today and what he said he said his nickname was Jaleas, Jelly because he used to be he said I used to be so big so everybody would call me Jelly and I got so mad because they called me Jelly and I said you know the Lord wants to touch your heart and he wants to grab your heart in his hand and you're going to be completely changed today. Hallelujah. And he did. He was baptized. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He had to leave the neighborhood because he has done so many things. And he, he didn't go to prison because a lot of people were involved in the killing. So he changed his life. And the Lord just, just, just to think, think about it. Missionaries went to Brazil. I married a missionary son, and then the, the, this missionary son went, went to live with the Lord, and he left me with all those drug dealers. <laughs> he left me in that neighborhood, and many people were saved. They received the Holy Ghost. They had been baptized. And my husband stopped the work. I'm continuing there, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm asking you tonight, what do you want the Lord to do for you? If he did that to him, he can do anything to anybody because he was so hungry. He wanted his life to be changed. Maybe you're here tonight. You need to, the Lord to touch your body, your mind, your heart. Maybe you're going through a different situation and you want the Lord just to prove you that he is your God. Job 42 verse 2 says, I have, I had heard of you by hearing of the year, but now my eye sees you. Hallelujah. I'd like to call Pastor, Pastor uh, Martin this tonight. And I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is so good. I have heard about him. The Lord can change you. You can receive the Holy Ghost. You can be changed. And the a drug dealer too, he said, the Lord spoke to me that I shouldn't do anything to kill you. And I couldn't do it. But now I'm telling you, I know who God is. He is a wonderful God. 
He protects me. He loves me. And he had a wonderful plan in my life. I think we ought to come up to the front right now. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. You've just heard some incredible stories of the power of God, how real He is, how personal He is, how personally involved He is. Why don't we just come up to the front let's close our eyes and let's call out to the Lord right now I believe there's somebody in this house right now God wants to show himself might to Hanarabo Korea come on Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. We pray, God, that your will be done in this place. Just as it is being done all over this world. Lives truly being changed by your power. You see those that are hungry. You see those that are truly thirsty. And you said they shall be filled. Blessed are the hungry and the thirsty. Light of the world, you step Hallelujah. down into That's it. darkness. That's it. Open my oh, eyes that we see. Give him your heart. Lord, here's my heart. Beauty that here's made my heart. This heart I give you all of my heart. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am mind. to worship. All Here I am to bow I down. Here I am to say that oh, you're this my work that you are doing. God. Let it be done. All together, lovely. Let it be done in us. All together, God, I pray. All together, See the to me change our lives change King our families of all days so so highly exalted glorious and heaven above only you came to the earth you created all full of saints Say, oh, yeah. 
You're my God. You are together, Lord. All together, Lord. All together, Lord. For to me, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together worthy, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's it. Keep on praying with me. Hallelujah. Come on, keep praying. You don't know how the Lord is able to use you while you're praying right now to help others that are praying. Come on. Hallelujah. God wants to use us all. Every one of us. Come on, we're involved in something bigger than we are. The power of God in our life. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. God, help us. Lord Jesus, heal my brother beside me. Heal those that are beside us, God. Those that are having troubled minds, tormented. They pray in the name of Jesus. Use us, God. Use our prayer, our intercession to bring peace to somebody else. To worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together worthy, all together worthy, all together wonderful to bear. I'll never know. It costs to see right myself upon the cross. I see into that invisible realm, but there is power in the name of Jesus. How much it works for God to see and the authority and the power upon the cross. God. Healing. You're all together Healing of the wounded. All together worthy. All together wonderful to be. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.